top of uh, the Jun guy, and I want Junk Rander to take it. Okay. We'll see what happens. It's anybody's game. As John does look at his seven cards here, is he happy, happy? Uh, I mean, I see a couple lands and some spells. I, it looks like an Arbor Elf. I feel like there was a mulch in there. I would definitely keep that uh, if those are the, the spells. John is going to send it back. And something we did see in the... Three. Three. Yeah, something Three. we did see in the quarterfinals yesterday is John did have to take a mulligan. I believe it was down to four and had to keep a no-lander. And was a little more competitive than we thought he was going to be. It, but it, 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 he, you got to five lands before we, we, we ended up giving up there. Yeah. And John looks the same as he did when he mulliganed to four there. He's just like, please, not this time. Yeah. I like my chances when I get to play lands and spells. Yeah. It's hard not to. He certainly had a very, very nice weekend. Going to be playing in our next standard open as well, which is what we'll bring to you guys after this finals match. We'll have a winner's interview uh, with Glenn in the sideboard. Uh, and then we'll wrap up this. We'll, re we'll be replaying our top eight matches, including that incredibly long marathon affair of the semifinals. And then Brad will take a two-round break, and then we'll be back here for you guys for our second standard yeah. open. No legacy this weekend. Which, in which is the, I think this is the most ironic, is I have, this is my eighth time commentating, or seventh or eighth. And every time they did Legacy, we had the two-round break, and I would go like to Standard, or I'd like gunsling some Standard or something. And I think this is the first time that I've ever played Legacy, which I'm going to play test Legacy for the Invitational coming up this next weekend in Atlanta, um, which I'm going to be attending. But it's a Standard event that I'm yeah. going to be the only person playing Legacy in the room yeah. on a Sunday during my break. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting ready for that. You're going to be commentating in Atlanta, right? Yeah, I'll be there with Osu Lodovic and Tom Martell. Tom Martell's debut in the booth. Maybe he'll bring the John Finkel scarf with him. We don't know quite yet. Got to have to talk to John about that. Yeah, but that is the uh, SCG Open in Atlanta featuring the Invitational. I think, what, March 4th through the 6th? Uh, April. April, April sorry, not March. We're yeah, not March, going back in time. March is just about over, believe it or not. Time flies when you're having fun commentating in the booth here for SCG Live. Can't believe we're already through three months of 2013 already. Yeah, it's been going so quick. I mean, we, uh, we, we're we on the road every week somewhere. Yeah. I don't even know what my apartment looks like anymore. I'm oh. barely there. I... I I never remember what my bet feels like, but it's always nice. <laughs> so do you see John going to draw his six cards here? You see a Thrag Tusk among others there. We'll All see right. if he's happy or not. As he's leaping through them. He says sure. It looks like that's a sure has been announced. They're just waiting for the green light from us. Mm -hmm. Are we happy, happy, gentlemen? Let's see who is going to be playing first here. And it is going to be Brandon. He is our two yeah. seed here. John is our four. So by the new play draw rules, we're going to have Brandon on the play. And we're going to be underway here. Temple Guard and Untapped. Arbor Elf. The most beautiful three cards you can have in this deck. Arbor Elf, Temple Guard, and Mulch. Uh, both players do have the Arbor Elf, so it's going to let John keep up on speed. And we could brick here, though. Brandon, I do not think, has a second land drop. He has to hit on this Mulch. And he definitely needs a Black Source. So... Uh, we got it. We got the Black Source. Cemetery and a Sun Petal Grove. So, right. Mulch, proving powerful. Crater of Behemoth goes to the graveyard. Something to keep in mind for later. I love it. Brand will pick up those lands. Able to hit his second land drop now. And able to play an Abyssin's Pilgrim. And here is actually a Deathlight Shaman. Oh, I guess that wasn't a Pilgrim in his hand. It looks like one. So oh, it's another mulch. John will, John will untap. He will draw. You see a root-bound crag in his hand. You also see a far seat to go along with an overgrown tomb, a Thundermaw Hellcrag, and a Thraktusk over there. So a bevy of options, which are probably going to start with ramping up his mana a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, down a card. Looks like things are going to get a little out of control for John. Uh, he might just go down the, I'm going to cast a Hasty Dragon and hope to win this game out. Now we are going to see our Brelf, and here comes our Farseek. So we'll see what land he's going to search Blood up Crypt. here, and it is going to be a Blood Crypt for John. I've played a lot of Jund-ish decks lately, and it's always Blood Crypt. Yeah. It's just always Blood Crypt. You always go get that land. Brandon going to untap. He's going to draw his card. You do see the Sun Petal Grove in his hand. Does have a Grizzly Savage. Does have Angel Serenity. Players, draw this step is yields an overgrown final team. call to register. Once again, this is a final call to register for today's well, this is standard This a perfect order. place you want to be for Brandon. You have a lot of options. You have an Angel you can ramp into. You have a Critter up in your graveyard that you can unbear rights into. And I think you, I know you have a Grizzly Savage, but I also believe that there's a Mulch in his hand. I cannot tell what that card is. We are going to lead off with the Grizzly Salvage, so our five cards are a Forest, another Grizzly Salvage, a Centaur Healer, a Lot with Troll, and a Lingering Soul. So a fairly good Grizzly Salvage here. Well, we're still looking for that one flashback card that we love, which is on Barrow Rights. Indeed. 
Lot of Troll going to go to the hand here for Brandon. Lingering Souls, among others, going to go to the graveyard. So he does get some value off of there, drawing a virtual two cards off that Grizzly Salvage. And he was able to put a land in his graveyard to accelerate through that Death Heart Shaman now. So um, next turn, he will have enough uh, mana to cast an Angel Serenity uh, unless John is able to miracle one of his bonfires. So Brandon reconsidering what land he does want to play, and he does play Sun Puddle Grove. Arbor Elf going to untap the yeah. land here. There is a Mulch, so really trying to dig through his graveyard. Sun Petal Grove, Restoration Angel, Grizzly Salvage, and Temple Garden. Temple Garden and the Grove will go to the hand. Restoration Angel and the Grizzly Salvage will go to the graveyard. So some good mulching and some good Grizzly Salvaging here thus far, and we'll see a real tough death right shot there. Yeah. Now Brandon uh, is in the finals. I don't want to be too nitpicky, but when I'm playing a Junk Animator deck, I like to cast the the between mulch and Grizzly Salvage, the one that gives me less options. First, so okay. I like to mulch before I cast any of my salvages, just for perfect information. Sure. So uh, I would have ordered those just the other, the opposite order, and cast the one on, on my opponent's turn. And now we are going to see John here tap five mana. He's going to lead out with a Thrag Tusk, the five bit we've seen hmm. over the course of the days here. He could have, maybe if he does have another red source, and he no, does he have does. a Thrag in his hand, so he chooses not to play Thunderbolt. He's player. open his opponent plays that Lingering Souls and he crashes in. Yeah. Lingering Souls is going to be defensive against against Thrag Tusk, allowing for the uh, the trigger off of the Thunderbolt Hellkite, killing the two spirit tokens and letting him crash in for 10. Little does he know that Brandon's going to be dealing a lot more damage than, than he expected. So now we are going to see Brandon play that Sun Petal Grove. Does have access to triple white mana. And now we are going to see a Thrag Tusk here. So Thrag Tusk come to the party. Oh, guys, ju this just in. I just saw it on Twitter. The Thrag Tusk is getting reprinted in 2014. Oh, wow, that's exciting. Oh, my God, everyone, isn't that great? More Thrag Tusk for years to come. <laughs> Brad, a little inside information there. As we are going to see John crash in with his Thrag Tusk. You see his Hand of Blood Crypt, Rootbound Crag, Thunderbolt Hellkite, and a Hot Master of the Fells. Beast Tokens will come in here. John, ever the nice guy, yes. giving Brandon one of his own. As well, that was a joke, just so you guys do know. Yes, of course. As just we want to make sure. A Hot Master of the Fells here post-combat, and here comes a Wolf Token. And John going to get his two life and just pass the turn back after playing that Blood Crypt. Yeah, this is going to uh, give uh, Brandon the opportunity to cast Angel Serenity if he wants to. Uh, I don't see why you wouldn't. Uh, you get to clear off of off John's board. So we're going to see Temple Garden coming to play untapped. He's going to have to cast, he's going to have to pay two life, excuse me, to do it. He's yeah. going to remove that force for additional mana. And here comes the 5-6. That is terrorized standard for the past month. And that does leave uh, him too shy of that crater up in hand. He did remove the only land that was in his graveyard. And so now we will see what Brandon chooses to target with Angel Serrani. As you see him thumbing through his own graveyard, <laughs> plenty of good targets in play as well. As you see, it's going to target that Hunt Master of the Fells. You see a Thrag uh, Tusk as well. He is just not afraid of the tokens to play. And he's going to take down what looks to be a Beast Token away. too. All right, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, this allows him to attack for three. Uh, John's not really able to block effectively. And leaves him with just a Thunder Ma Hellkite. So this is what normal Jun versus Junk looks like in my world. This is what it looks like in yes. my world, too. We'll see if John is able to turn over a Bonfire of the Damned. He is not. You see a Hand of Overgrown Tomb, Rootbound Crag, and Thundermaw no, that's Hellkite. He's going to do that next turn because oh. he doesn't have six power yet. Ah, uh, yes, you're correct. My apologies. Yeah, he needs uh, another land to be able to uh, Bonfire for six. And you wonder if he's going to pull the trigger here on Thundermaw Hellkite or he not. has to. You know, he was considering maybe trying to set... Brandon up, maybe get the Lingering Souls, but you do mm -hmm. see Thundermile Hellkite. The trigger is going to tap that Angel Serenity. Here comes the Wolf Token. Here comes the Dragon and the Arbor Elf. So an attack here for 8. Going to knock Brandon down to 13. And John just going to pass the turn back. Uh, 13 is a very unique life total because uh, if Brandon doesn't progress his board and uh, John does Miracle a Bonfire, that's lethal. Or gains any life. Yeah. So we will see. Brandon does untap. He does draw a card. Let's see what he finds. He finds a Cavern of Souls. That's just one. He's one shy of casting that Crater Hoof Behemoth. Doesn't have an Umbera rights. So we, we're in it. 
we are actually in it. He has no way to gain life this turn. If John miracles a bonfire, he wins this game. Oh, excuse me. We have Deathrite Shaman. That's not true. So now here comes Brandon with an Angel Serenity and a Beast Token. An attack here for eight. John's sitting at 23 life currently. Well, he's just going to take it because he has no decisions left. He is F6. Lingering Soul is going to come to play defense against this Thunder My Hellkite. Brandon has to be a little uh, nervous about this. Uh, the question is, does he shock himself to play um, a Lotlith Troll and have regeneration? Or does he just play it tapped and use our elf to untap the land and still have activations of Deathrite Shaman? Yeah. He's considering that right now. He does shock uh, he himself. Does shock so he's going to push him down, himself down to 11. He is going to play Lotlith Troll. And now, because he went down to 11, Bonfire is lethal again. So, so can Kuvir doing it? We have seen him turn over Bonfire twice so far this weekend. He has a chance. It is not there. It's just a wolf run. You see him draw a Kessig wolf run. That is two, three, four short of lethal, and he's not staring down lethal yet. I think he can attack with that the the Thunder My Hellkite and hopefully survive the turn the next turn. But the problem is if Brandon does draw a land, that is game over. Creator Behemoth will be game over. Now, actually, he does have Cadre of Souls in his hand, so he does have the requisite lands, as you do see. John does that play correct, his yeah. Kessig Wolf run. Here comes Thunderball yeah. Hellkite. Thunderball Hellkite. Maybe. Looking like it wants to attack. Considering the options of maybe playing defense and acting, activating Kessig Wolf run defensively. Yeah, I mean, he has to be... I mean, he has to be nervous if Deathrite Shaman, like, tick down ability or, like, uh, lose two life ability twice in a row. Um... Yeah, he, he knows he's dead. He's just seeing the decisions, I think. And so now we do see Lingering Souls, a double block. And now we will have a large Castle oh, right. Wolf run And Brandon is just here. playing defensively just because yeah, he knows he's got it locked so up. If you don't have somebody sitting from across from you, please raise your hand. And so keep it in see. race until either somebody shows up or Jared comes around to check your name off the list. I want to make sure everybody gets in their seats. And as everybody's kind of working. Start the tournament. So now we do uh, see a Kessig Wolf for activation for four. On Sunday, Sunday, we do have a Death Rite Shaman activation. going to remove that Drag Tusk. Gave himself two days. life. Um, after the dust does settle day, here, you'll see two Spirit Tokens go bye bye. Day. Some damage exchanged. All, and then after an untapped step here, I think we're going to see a very happy Brad Nelson as we see a draw. We see a Cavern of Souls, and it looks like we're going to see a Greater yes, Hope Behemoth. Boom. We would like for everybody's cards to stay in excellent condition. And so after the trigger, we are going to see a huge attack here. John is going to take his Beast Token back. He's going to concede the game. So Brandon Ross does win game one here. Junk Reanimator against John Cuvier in the finals. Playing John. I think I'm going to... End in, in between this game, we have a, a question that I have to ask. Is we have a full year premium to we give do. away. We but do. I think I'm also going to add Brandon on Facebook because he's a hoof buddy. And we're going to see you guys are, you guys are good friends he's, he's, now. He's just showing me hoofs all over. I've been begging for it. Yeah, fair enough. And he's just been providing all day long. It's awesome. We're going to have to feature him during the next standard open just to get some more hoofs in the middle of it. We do have Callie Anderson making an announcement here. Our second standard open will be starting here shortly. But we do have trivia to give away to you guys very quickly here. Again, we are going to give you a year for this one again. Hashtag your answer with SCG Premium. 12 months for the winner. Again, it is about accuracy, not speed. The question is very simply. Where is our Star City Games Regional Open Series Invitational going to be next weekend? What city are we in? Well, there's going to be an Open Series, and it's going to be featured in the Invitational. Yeah. I'll be playing in the Invitational. I'll be commentating the Invitational and both Open. Yeah. And if you know uh, what's yeah. And if you know the city, that's the answer to the question. Uh, it's a softball. A good hint is the first city that Rick traveled to. In, uh, in what? In, in Walking Dead. A uh, show I'm not very familiar with. Well, you should be. I've heard it's very good, and I will be watching it eventually. But if you know the answer again, right. hashtag the answer to SCG Premium. As we're going to cut back to the players here. About this final match, I just have a question to ask you. So, with John down again, in a matchup that he thinks is bad, but he's still fighting, would you say he's the good guy in this matchup? Even though he's John, he's the good guy? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, there has to be a good guy in this matchup. I'd say the champion man is the bad guy, so yeah. Yeah, he is definitely the good guy, and, like, he has been keeping everyone check, but, like, I, I feel like I want to give John a good nickname in this matchup. Give him, like, a strong nickname. I'm thinking the governor. Is the governor good? The governor? Yeah. He's, he's governing all the junk decks, right? Yeah, governor, governor resolves. All right. So we're going to give him the governor for this this round. Well, let's see what the uh, the governor is going to be able to sideboard in here. You take a look at his sideboard, you see one Museum Mortars, two Bonfire of the Damned, two Slaughter Games, a Liliana the Veil, two Acidic Slimes, two Tragic Slips, two Duress, an additional Ground Seal, a Pillar of Flame, and a Rakdos Return for John. Of course we're going to see that Ground Seal come in. We'll probably see those Slaughter Games coming as well today with yep. Burial Rites or uh, Angel of Serenity. And then other than that, I mean, not entirely sure what he does want to bring. I know you're a big fan, again, of Bonfire the Damned in this matchup. Oh, Bonfire is great. Uh, as we saw Maybe in his quarterfinal matchup, Tyrrell he just was able to miracle Tyrrell. that and win the game Tyrrell. instantly, and that's what happens in these mid-range matchups. Uh, John, John definitely does have uh, his sideboarding figured out for this matchup. He just brings in the Bonfires, the Slaughter Games, the Ground Seal. Just make sure that these cards are important. He also racked us returns his opponent as well. Steven, please report to table 79. It w just to be clear about the whole governor thing, I don't know. I had a blunder. I'm still waking up. I, I, I got the names mixed up, and Brandon Ross's opponent last round was named Rick, and I was going to have Rick versus the governor. That's a, that's a walking dead thing, and I was trying mm. to set it up. It was poorly set up and executed and everything. You really wanted that to happen. Yeah. It's all right. It's okay. Sure. We'll teach you, you yet, don't young get, one. We don't get there all the time. But we do have Junk Reanimator boarding in and Obstadot. That's very good in this matchup. A Ray of Revelation is extremely powerful. That's a card that jo John is not used to playing against. Not many Junk Reanimator players are playing that card. Great answer to uh, Ground Seal. Yep. So we're going to see a Ray of Revelation come in. That doesn't mean that means you don't have to bring those Abrupt Ks in. And we'll see some acidic times as well. So he does have good numbers in the sideboard for this matchup. John is definitely against a foe that has a very good scripted 75 for this metagame. Yeah, it seems like he's pretty comfortable in the Judd matchup as well. So John down a game here. We saw a more traditional game there. What we've been seeing, Junk Reanimator really prey on Jund. Yeah. Just kind of doing its so thing, casting its spells, playing a traditional game of magic, very mid-range mirror. Fractal spelling back and forth, Angel of Serenity being the trump card. John did have window there to draw Bonfire the Damned, and that's probably why you see the two more on the sideboard because he does realize the importance of that card in this matchup. And yeah, I, I think there's an oversight of Brad as he just did not see that happen. Like he get, he he was outside of Bonfire range. He, he had no out to lose to from John, and he gave him one turn window. John had to be very excited about that. Just wasn't able to convert that time. No miracle bonfire for John that time. And again, we have seen John miracle two bonfires over the course of this weekend. And Arachos return. Yeah, and Arachos return too. What so. do you actually do? So we'll see as both players are shuffling up here for game number two. the worst Easter ever. The worst Easter ever has been declared. Wow. Um, Firehead Judge. Really yeah, Firehead yeah, Judge. So it is, of course, up here on the East Coast. It is only 10 14, and yet the worst Easter ever has been declared. So, for everyone else out there, as time goes on and you go to your Easter's, you have to just let your family know that this is going to be the worst Easter ever, just so they know. There's nothing that can be done. Our head, our head judge is, of course, the final ruling. So, if he declares this the worst Easter ever, that's what it is. You can't, you can't argue with you him. You certainly cannot appeal that ruling. No. That is law. That's the power of the head judge. So, Brad, I know, uh, I know you think John Fanwater is going to win. I, I think John has it in him to at least even it up. He, you, you at least think we're going to game three? I think at least we're going to see a game three. He's going to fight for that title. Yeah, he's fighting as hard as he can, but we've got Ray of Revelation. Do you know how good that card is in this matchup? It's a good card. I That's, can't argue it. Yeah, and that is a card that if Jund is more popular, we're going to see more copies of. Ray of Revelation, also a good card. Turning a Rest in Peace into a Torment script. Act, a triggered ability on the stack of removing the graveyard. Yep. You can flash it back, kill it. Yes, you will lose your entire graveyard, but you will continue to be able to put more cards in your graveyard. Some strategies you see many of the combo uh, human reanimator decks doing, but that deck has, has lost... Um, a lot of footing when Junk got in here because everyone played Graveyard Hate and that deck is a little bit more combo oriented, uh, definitely more risky once the Graveyard Hate comes into play. So we see Junk being able to live through it. So do you see both players shuffling up here for game number two? Brandon Ross up a game here. Junk Reanimator looking to take down what feels like it's a hundredth tournament in a row. Again, winning both of our last two open series. 
Uh, when we we saw David Bauer win in Washington D.C., we saw Will Craddock win in Kansas City, Brandon Ross looking to make it a three-peat here in Orlando. We also saw it win the MOCS and Grand Prix Verona. This deck has really hit the scene here in a big way yet again. But we see John Cuvier trying to dethrone this deck. I feel like this is the most impact a deck has had in a format without blue in it in a very long time. I think Bellicut was somewhat there, but it was not the winner always. It was like the two in top eight deck. Yeah. Uh, but seeing Junk here without blue cards and winning everything, it's good. It feels good. You know? Well, for those of you who don't like to play Islands or Snapcaster Mages, like myself, or don't enjoy trying to flip a Delver of Secrets, maybe you do enjoy watching these Junk decks go to work, these Thrag Tusks being cast back and forth. As we do see John taking a look at his opening seven cards, seeing this look before does not look horribly pleased here. As you do see a par seek in his hand, you're wondering how many lands are there. How many me think there green, green many. sources, yeah. Yeah. You do see an overgrown tomb. It might be a one lander. You see slaughter in his hand as well. Olivia Valderin. Is he going to risk keeping the one lander in this match? I don't think he can, but you are down a game. It's scary. You just have to pray that it's there. Just tanking, thinking so hard. Wants it so bad. Just two games away from winning after battling through almost 400 players at the first SEG Orlando Standard Open. The difficult thing here is, you know, he's taking a look at his hand. You see that he he, look, he likely has a one lander here, and he knows that he can't keep it, so he's going to send it back. And the tough part here is if he has to draw the second land immediately so he can parse yes. it. But then he also has to draw another land so he can cast those four drops. You know, that'll yeah. leave you there in that slaughter games, that hunt match the fells. So realizes that, you know, maybe the numbers don't add up in my favor. Going to take a mulligan and hopefully find a better six cards. Well, and I definitely agree with that. That's that's the thing about Jund is you have to make sure that you hit your four lands. You can operate very well off four lands, but you need the initial ones. And uh, if this was just the finals of today, the last game, you know, maybe you keep and try to get lucky. But he's got another tournament to play. Yep. You know, both these players are playing in the finals, want this trophy, but know that the day is not done. Here at Star City Games, we play a lot of magic. Can't stop old stuff. Exactly. If you were playing green and had a Korean card, so we're going to see John take a mulligan out of six here. And you know, we're looking at you looking for an opening hand here. No you know, he does have plenty of cards that he's looking for when he does take this hand. mulligan. He does have Please cards like Slaughter Games in his deck. He does have Grounds to defend the Hunter Mulligan. He does have, you know, Far Six and Arm Realms to be able to continue to accelerate. So taking a mulligan of six isn't the worst thing in the world. We saw him do it last game. The thing about John and the reason that it's so good is sometimes it's not the greatest mulligan deck. Sometimes your sixes look really bad. But what it is is it has a lot of powerful spells. Right, so we'll mulligan, you try to mulligan into, to mulligan into your best cards. So um, round and so if we just have three lands, three spells, and we get there, he can he can fight back. Junk has a lot of air, where Jund is dense, yeah. very dense with a lot of great magic magic cards. You see, John unaffected, oh, unaffected by the mulligans. Not a big deal. We'll see what he's able to cobble together here on these six. We've seen him take a lot of mulligans thus far when he's been on the camera. But it hasn't deterred him. He has not lost yet. Even watching in the quarterfinals of yesterday, that mulligan to four, keeping a no-lander, taking a couple turns to finally hit his first land drop, chain into a second one, into a ground seal. Was not able to come back, but actually did put up a fight for a mulligan to four, keeping a no-lander. Oh, uh, And missing your first two land drops. I, yeah, that, that was a good game to watch. I, I enjoyed that a lot. There's been a lot of good action this weekend. Yeah. So you do see John fanning him out. You see at least two lands already. So you see a much better hand. You see a Rakdos return. Looks like we see a far seek, and it looks like he is happy, happy. So game two, we're underway. John starts off with an overgrown tomb, or does he? Or he took yes, it he back. does. Are right, they looking for the green light? And they have been given uh, it. Overgrown tomb here for Brandon. John is going to draw a card. He gets to go into far seek now. Get his red mana started. We have a Thunder My Hellcat. We have a Rakdos return. We have some other green card. We're going to see him search for a Blood Crypt here, and he's going to pass the turn back. It's always the Crypt. <laughs> always that Blood Crypt. As we are going to see Brandon draw a card here. Is this the Mulch? Is this the seven-card Mulch? Oh, I love the seven-card Mulch. Brandon is very going. excited. Hit two lands, we get a discarded card. No. We see Temple Garden, Abrupt Decay, Restoration Angel, and Grizzly Salvage. Temple Garden's going to go to John's, or excuse me, to Brandon's hand. And that, that would, would be, be a his bad turn. card. Yeah. <laughs> And after Brandon does shuffle John's deck from that far seek, we'll see what John's able to cobble together. You see an Acidic Slime, you see a Rackers Return, you see a Thundermile Hellkite. Two Thundermile Two Thundermile Hellkites. Yeah, we need so to draw lands. That's, John that's what John needs. John needs a little runner-runner. Nothing funner. 
than a runner runner. Let's see what he can find. Root we did Kragis. not brick. Rebound Craig is step number one. All right, pass the turn. He does just pass Rackus right for two. Running Thunder so good. <laughs> Running Thunder Hellkites will be really good. And now we're gonna see a Grizzly Salvage here for Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, what what he's looking for is he's trying to find a Pilgrim or an Arbor Elf or even a Death Shaman if he kept it in, just to keep the acceleration going so he can drop a five drop. He did miss. He didn't find an Unbearer Rights, so he's going to have a no turn next turn. So now if John draws a land. This game is almost wrapped up. Hellkite into Hellkite before Brandon plays a real relevant spell. As we do see Rave Revelation, Abrupt Decay, Forest, Angel Strandy, and Lotless Troll, the cards are revealed to a Grizzly Salvage. Very favorable Grizzly Salvage there for John. As you see, yes, yes, Brandon did turn over a Forest there, did turn over a Flashback spell with Rave Revelation, but no one barely writes there. So he's got to be feeling pretty good about that, and no one mana accelerant either to kind of turn up the heat and force John to be able to draw that fifth land right away. As you do see Brandon just play that Temple Guard and pass the turn back. So let's see what John's able to draw. John draws his card. And it was a Bonfire of the Damned. It is not time for that card no, right now. No, this is not where we want a miracle. And he does just pass the turn back. So <coughs> Brandon draws his card. You see him draw a Gaffney Township. Now that, the, the miss by John for a land is going to give Brandon enough time to hopefully get some things set up. Uh, he does not know what's waiting in the wings. Another <laughs> Miracle Bonfire. Sean ironically draws another Miracle Bonfire, is unable to cast it, and does just pass the turn back, desperately hoping to draw that fifth land. While Brandon is drawing plenty of lands and is going to lead out here with a Thract with an no, Acidic Slime. Yeah, you take I did not lands. see that in his hand. He does have Acidic Slime. He's going to blow up that Blood Crypt. John ironically going to draw the fifth <laughs> land right off the top now, which is a forest. And now the issue here for John is not only does he need a fifth land, but now he needs a red source as well, yes. Brad. It's, it's going to be tough now. Um, John does just want to keep seven. I it, I mean, I don't think we're going to get a third game, but if we did, I would just want him to have seven. He's been struggling against these junk decks, not keeping any hands. Um, fighting really hard. But, yeah, there's as you can see, it's just like the, the power level is not there. You just have to get very lucky. Hitting the you know running lands into having those thunder the two thunder mods in his hand for him to like have taken this game anyway. And now we so. do see Obzadak Ghost Council come in. John is going to play a Hunt Master of the Fells. That was his draw for this turn. Card that has little to no impact. Would have been much better a couple of turns ago when mm -hmm. Brandon was just trying to get his feet set. But now that Brandon does have his lands, he does have his spells. He does have Obzadak coming back into play with haste. You see him draw a Restoration Angel, which that's you can blink that Acidic Slime. That's game. And we might be crowning a champion here in Orlando. Junk Reanimator looking to do it again. Here comes your Acidic Slime. Here comes your Obzadat. All right, what does he do? I mean, he's probably going to put the wolf. This is just a, a check from Brandon. He's chump attacking with that Acidic Slime. He, there's no way he's letting that thing die. He's hungry for that red source. Yeah. And hard not to be. You see a wolf token going to get in front of this. Right. Brandon going to reveal what his draw step was. You're going to see Restoration Angel. It's going to blink out that Acidic Slime. It's going to take down that Rootbound Crag. You see the look on John's face, wishing he could have top-decked those lands instead of top-decking those Bonfire mm -hmm. of the Damned. This game would have been very easy if he just hit that, that turn four land. You see he is going to draw a card. He does draw a Woodland Cemetery. Now no red sources of mana. Can't cast those Bonfires. All red cards in hand. Yep. Can't cast those Thunderball Hellkites. So far away from those. Rakdos Return, even a card that wouldn't be great to cast now. He can't even cast as well. And he does just have to begrudgingly pass the turn back. Abrupt Decay. Keeping the Huntmaster from flipping. Obzada comes into play. Drops John 2-9. He is just five points away from beating beating him. Is that a Lingering Souls? We have a Lingering Souls. We have a Township. That's a little bit more. That Huntmaster is going to have to get in front of Big Daddy Obzadot. And you can see Brandon can sense it now. He knows. He knows he's weak. You see this attack here. We're going to see a Township activation it looks like. Going to make those guys a little bit bigger. It's going to be a push through for seven points of damage. Going to knock John down to two. He's going to put that Huntmaster in the graveyard. Obzadat is probably going to blink out here which is going to represent lethal, yeah. lethal, and you see a handshake, handshake excuse me, from John Cuvier. Brandon Ross wins the images. Look, I mean, wins the open. Look at him. He just feels good, satisfied. He took down his win, wins the entire open, probably feels confident enough to take that to the Invitational, keep this ride alive. Huh. 
does win 2-0 with Junk Reanimator. Junk Reanimator wins its third Star City Games Open Series Standard Tournament in a row. Congratulations again to Brandon Ross. John Cuvier, a fantastic tournament. One hell of a run. Did win the last time we were here in Orlando. Makes it to the finals again here with Jund. But Junk Reanimator... A lot of people consider it to be the best deck in the format, and if you didn't believe before, you see why now. Wins its if you don't third believe now, open. then you are the most thick-headed person I've ever <laughs> met. <laughs>